welcome back to another episode of the hobby collectors today we're making rubber stamps and here are the ingredients <laughs> <laughs> well, here. here are the ingredients <laughs> you'll need paper pencils and eraser for sketching out designs a craft knife with plenty of blades a lino cutter handle and blades in different sizes tweezers for removing stubborn bits of rubber and of course a blank rubber pad to carve out and some inks to print with. Scrap wood, handsaw, sandpaper, and super glue to make a handle. Oh, and some spray varnish too. Some of the future projects that we've got on our to-do list for this channel are crafty things that would be nice with a maker's mark. So I thought it would be nice for us to do rubber stamp carving, which was one of the projects, as a making a maker's mark. We doodled different craft items and played with the H and C. And then I ended up making the H and C out of craft items. I used graph paper to help me sketch out clean letter shapes, and then I was able to use tracing paper on top to draw the final design. I settled on a little play button for the handle between the H stems. H stems, yep. Tracing paper is helpful because it allows you to see the design from both sides of the paper so that when you're transferring it to the rubber block, you can see where it's going. And you need to have the design flipped over because it's printmaking, and if you don't flip it over, then your stamp is gonna be backwards. So you scribble or rub over the back of the design to transfer it to the rubber. It was a bit messy, so I spent some time cleaning up the lines to give me something really clean and clear to carve around. Here, Claudia's using a fairly narrow V gouge to carve around the outside of the design. The pencil marks is where you want the stamp to be, or it is for our stamp anyway. So you don't want to carve out the lines, you want to carve out around the lines. It's fiddly work, so take your time and go as slow as you need to. And that was something that we noticed over the course of this project, that it really is a trust the process kind of a thing. Yeah. It was really easy to get frustrated early on when it didn't seem to be going perfectly right away. The face of concentration. <laughs> Here, Claudia's using a wider U-shaped garage to remove basically everything outside the design that we want to not print. With the outline of the stamp carved out, now I carve out the inside bits. This is super hecking fiddly. I've always been a crafty person, so I have carved before, both rubber and wood and probably other things, but I'm definitely not a pro at it, and you can see that with how I'm struggling here. That's part of what inspired us to make these videos, though, is we wanted to show people that even if you're not a pro at something, that you can still give it a go and get some pretty decent results. If you've ever been curious about trying to carve your own stamp, I encourage you to just give it a go. If you want to give this a go but don't want to spend any money on it, you can do a really low budget version of this. You'll still need pencil and paper to sketch out your design and transfer it. But then for the stamp part, you can get by with just using a white school eraser, preferably a new one, and a craft knife.
here I'm using the craft knife a little bit like a slower version of the V gouge. So I'm cutting one side of the V away from the line at a 45 degree angle. And that way I can take my time and I can see the line well. And then I go from the other side doing 45 degrees as well. And that cuts out a little V shape. Because I'm not a super skilled carver, I felt more comfortable doing it this way than with the V gouges on the lino cutter tool because it allowed me to see what I was doing a bit better and I could do one side at a time. That gets pretty tricky around curves though and I'm still not very good at that part. But this is kind of a whole part of that, trusting the process. Like with the knife, you're able to make lots of really small yeah. cuts and yeah. sneak up on the line. That's a <laughs> phrase I've heard people use in woodworking, but that's very true here as well. Yeah, that's the thing I was meaning to ask you about here. Like, I noticed you were... Sucking using... at carving. Yeah. <laughs> no, that you were using the craft knife instead of one of the gouges for clearing the big area. Yeah, because our gouges aren't very good or sharp. Some of them are quite old, but even the new one was not mm. sharp and don't know how to sharpen those well. This isn't essential, but here I'm using a sharpie to highlight what's been carved so far. It allows you to better see what sections still need carving or need refining. This was especially useful for the tiny bits on the thread bobbin here. And now we're getting to clearing up the edges of the print, ready to start. Uh, test printing. This is just removing all of the little leftover lumps and bumps that were causing, or that would cause, inky bite. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Inspired. Inky bite bops, bibbles. Yeah, that's what they're called. The technical term. I quite like this because with the extra contrast of the Sharpie, you, you're really beginning to get a feeling for what the final print's going to look like. Yeah. Speaking of which, it's time for the first test print. At this point we know the print isn't finished yet, but much like the Sharpie, this allows us to see what's happening. I just love the little derpy C-shaped pencil. Here I'm peering at the test print and using that to decide where to carve next, basically what needs tidying up. Here I'm marking out the lines on the little ruler so that I can know which ones to cut short and which ones I want to keep long. Here's another test print, and here I'm circling the bits that I want to fine tune. Uh, 
How did you find this part, doing the little bits of fine-tuning and cutting? The fine-tuning was actually one of the easier things to do. Huh. Since the stamp I did, I was finding the more detail I was trying to do, the like the rubber was really spongy. Yeah, I didn't like this rubber. That wasn't fun to use. No. <laughs> it feels like it would have been nicer if it were more crumbly. I also wonder if maybe just our tools weren't as sharp as they needed to be. That's we did use new blades in the X-Acto and it was still yucky to carve with that. That's true. And that's the stamp finished. We're cutting it out and beveling the edges. For the handle, we just dug a piece of wood out of our scrap wood pile, measured it, and cut it to size. Sand it down the sides a bit, then sand down the edges, and the little corners. It passed inspection, so just did a final pass with a much finer grit sandpaper. Wipe off the sawdust. Print the design on the back of the handle. This helps us know when stamping in future what way around the stamp is. making sure I'm going to put the stamp on the right way around. Apply some super glue. And squish. We let it rest under some books to make sure it was nicely adhered everywhere. Then it was varnish time. We went outside for this to minimize the fumes. And it's done! And... Our first ever use of the completed stamp. satisfying. It's not perfect, but we love how it turned out. Hand-carved stamps, unless you're mad skilled, are always gonna look, well, hand-carved. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know how to tell us. And if you want to see more, you know what to do. So we hope to see you next week.